This is a $99 3D printer kit, the second cheapest machine I've ever reviewed here on Maker's Muse, with the first being the oh-so-terrible 101 Hero, which I backed for about $79. But can a 3D printer this cheap be any good? Well, it's a start. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh gummy bears. <laughs> How's it going guys? My name is Angus and welcome back to Maker's Muse. This is the Start 3D Printer Kit, released by iMaker for just $99.99, 100 bucks USD, with the intention to kickstart your journey into the 3D printing world. That's their words. They've teamed up with My Mini Factory to promote it and big thanks to both of them for sending one across to me to check out, because they're in quite high demand. The kit arrived well packaged and iMaker has put a lot of effort into the instructions for it with both photos and videos available to help you get it assembled. Despite being aimed at beginners, I'll be honest, this acrylic frame style of design is very fiddly to assemble with the T-slots and nuts and that sort of thing, and it might be frustrating for some, especially if you've never done anything like this before. However, as I said, the instructions are quite good and thorough. Some aspects that are fiddly include attaching and tightening the timing belts across here and some of the T-slot areas. And uh, the wiring as well is kind of up to you. Big props to them for including a power adapter and not having this kit be yet another DIY mains death trap. So if you're willing to give your kit a hand when they need it, you could get this together in a weekend of casual assembly. The print volume is small at 120 by 140 by 130 millimeters in the Z and it has a non-heated bed which is removable and it's again this sort of uh, fiberglass Garolite plate that we've seen a few times in low cost kits. The machine itself has a Bowden style extruder and it actually has full size NEMA 17 stepper motors. So purchasing five of those alone will probably cost more than this kit. So you're really getting quite a lot for your money. Some of you more seasoned 3D printer kit builders might recognize this design of the start. It's actually in fact a rebranded kit from Tronxy or Tron XY. However, there's a few tweaks to it and the start price is still more attractive than if you went straight to China. I'll get into my theories as to why at the end of this video though. But let's first talk about user experience using the start. Similar to the Tronxy X1, which is this one up here, you have a fairly janky uh, tactile switch interface, which works okay, but I much rather an encoder wheel to interface with the machine. It just seems to work a lot more fluid for me. Machine has an all-in-one Melzi style control board, which you load G-code onto via the micro USB, uh, sorry, micro SD card. It's a bit of a pain to access at the back of the machine, but not the worst I've seen. And you could also run this printer via the USB port using OctoPrint or even tethered to a PC. But I personally always prefer to run G-code on SD cards with my 3D printers. To make running the start easier, iMaker and My Mini Factory have skinned up their own version of Cura with presets and a convenient My Mini Factory browser so you can download files straight into the slicer. This works nicely and it's a pretty good trick to train people into using just one ecosystem. Unfortunately, I found the preset print speeds to be way too optimistic for my machine. With the extruder motor losing steps constantly at 60 millimeters per second print speed, I slowed it down to 30 and increased the driver current slightly, slightly, which helped, but it did get very hot. But it still does slip now and then during printing. I think it just needs more torque and it's just not getting it, at least not in my machine. Increasing your print temperature does help, but then you start to run into cooling issues on your prints. So getting good 3D prints from the start definitely takes a bit of trial and error. For starters, the design really needs to be put on a sturdy level surface and never moved. Otherwise, your carefully set bed level will completely change. Why? Well, it might have something to do with the total lack of frame rigidity. I believe the correct word here is torsion. Yeah, look at it go. Next was the issue of the prints just coming out terrible. One reason was my fault, I'll be completely honest, the set screw on the Z-axis pulley here was slightly loose, so it was having a bit of free movement. However, I was not impressed by the incorrectly sized idler bearing for the Z-axis on this side. It was very large and meant that the belt was being forced out of alignment. It's not that great a design. That can't be good for anyone, so I replaced it with a smaller idler bearing 
which seems to work a bit better. Ideally though, there should have been something exactly the same size on both sides, so there's no weird misalignment. Another issue I encountered early on was the total incorrect X and Y extents as defined in the firmware, causing these weird soft limit errors where the print looked like it just ran into an invisible wall during the printing process, even though I was using the presets in Cura. iMaker have a quick fix PDF on changing these using Repetia. However, following their instructions, the prints still seem way off center, even though I'm using their instructions and their software. I can't see any real way to change the location of the X and Y limit switches, so it looks like further firmware tweaks are required. It's small things like this which really put off newcomers. If this was my first 3D printed kit and I had no idea what was causing these issues, aka nothing I was doing, it's just not set up correctly from factory. And that's not really on. Once you move past these issues, however, the print quality off the start is actually really decent for a machine of this price. I mean, remembering, it's 100 bucks. I had no issues reproducing lattice structures like inside this bunny, and there was no real detectable Z wobble either as long as I didn't touch the machine during printing. And I even tried my tolerance gauge which actually got down to 0.2 millimeter clearances, which is really impressive and actually on par with most regular FDM machines. Only some machines can get below 0.2 millimeter clearances, so that's saying a lot for a machine at this price point. So for a first 3D printer, the start has a lot going for it. It's super cheap, which makes it less of a risky purchase if someone's not going to get into the hobby after playing with it. And assembly is fiddly, but not all that much worse than the, a big Meccano set. If someone's used to putting that together, they'll, be, they'll have no problem putting this together. And it has a safe 12 volt DC adapter, so you don't have to worry about electrocuting yourself or your kid with mains voltages. However, it's definitely got its drawbacks. It's a PLA only printer, and the part quality will not come close to a more rigid machine with higher quality motion components. I'm probably more frustrated than I should be about the incorrect firmware setup. It's just such a simple fix and really something that to overlook that is really frustrating. It might be caused by Tronxy using the same firmware for a different printer in this one, such as the X1. And personally, I believe the X1 is a slightly better design. It's more rigid due to the aluminum extrusion versus this sort of laser cut acrylic. But that's just my personal opinion and it's definitely not perfect either. Overall, the start is a genius marketing tactic because think about it, they can't be making too much, if anything, selling this 3D printer considering the price is less than you'd pay direct from China. In fact, the price is low enough to purchase on a whim, which iMaker knows if you get hooked, you'll quickly outgrow the limitations of this little kit, either through outgrowing the print volume, print quality, or material compatibility. Once you do this, they know you'll be there and they'll be ready to sell you something better and something that costs a lot more money. Quite clever if you ask me, but I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. And full disclosure, iMaker in collaboration with my mini factory did send this start 3D printer kit to me for free to review on Maker's Muse. And this video contains my own opinion, no one else's about this machine and other things in this video. So if you want to purchase a start 3D printer kit, you can find the link in the video description, as well as additional learning resources if you're just getting started in 3D printing. And if you found this video useful, please do consider subscribing. My name is Angus, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye. That was the SD card. <laughs> I gotta go find it now. Oh my there you go, Minion. You're vicious. <laughs> <laughs>